I'm Jerome Glenn. I'm the executive director, CEO of the Millennium Project. The Millennium Project is a decentralized global participatory think tank created in 1996 after a three-year feasibility study and a one-year pre-feasibility study and a couple of years of saying, are we crazy enough to create a world participatory think tank? And this was, when we started looking at this, it was 1988, the Cold War was still going on. Anyway, we have survived up to the present tense and we've produced over 60 global futures research studies, uh, futures methodology series, and a whole bunch of other sort of stuff. And we have uh, 70 nodes around the world, including Iran and Israel and Pakistan and India. So our commitment is to the future of humanity, not a particular ideology or a country or a nation state. Um, and I'm here because one of the gaps in futures research is the way to manage AGI before it happens and have that codified in nation states and in the UN and a collaboration between the UN and the nation states on how that gets evolved. Uh, our study has three sections. The first uh, was 55 world leaders on AGI, including Ben and others, uh, on 22 different questions. So it put all the stuff on a table. The second phase was to go through that table and pick out the important potential regula regulations and, and ways of managing this. And um, the third one, the second one's almost finished. The third stage is more the reason why I'm here, is I'm gonna start writing scenarios, alternative scenarios on how governance works and doesn't work and all the variations. And I thought that the conference would exercise my imagination and thoughts to do that and one of the what things that I learned here that just is delightful, the idea of a constitution for artificial general intelligence is great, and I'm gonna work that in with her permission into the scenarios. Yes, uh, one of the clear patterns is there's general acceptance that whatever governance body is created internationally and in nation states should be a multi-stakeholder body. The only multi-stakeholder body in the UN is ILO that has nation states, it has businesses, and it has labor unions. They're the only one. So the precedent has already been done, but what hasn't been done is the idea of broadening that out to businesses and software developers and corporations and universities and think tanks and so forth. So the idea of having a multifaceted trans-institution, sort of like different institutional categories, um, is acceptable. Um, Ben's idea came in third. They're, they're all relatively closely and rated, but so he's in there. Um, the, so that would be one, is, is a general acceptance that the management will not be done by nation states alone. That's off the table. And it doesn't matter whether you're in Africa, Latin America, Europe, that's across the table. I would say uh, another, there's a range of opinion on sentience, there's a range of opinions on um, how much regulation and how much to trust the UN. But then the trust of the UN came from the idea as, as if it did it by itself. But then once it becomes multi-stakeholder, then the trust goes up. Um, what else is there? Another one which I, it seems to be acceptable here at the conference, I've run it by a few people, is that the, uh, an auditing system to prove going through a simulation of some sort to prove safety and alignment and so forth um, ought to have a continuous 24-hour auditing system that would be run by narrow AI. So general AI would have narrow AI inside, and would there be more than one narrow AI? There could be a bunch of different narrow AIs for different functions. And so, that, so as you have the AGI licensed by a country, proven that they've done all this sort of stuff, and then certified by a UN agency to make sure, because countries don't always, not every country does things as well, so you still have to have another layer there. Um, but the idea then would be the AGI is continually being audited. It's not a one-shot deal. It's just like a, the old concept of a governor came from steam engine. You know, if, if steam engine goes too fast, these balls goes out and slows it down. 
So you have it all the time. So the same idea is that you have 24-hour continuous auditing, but that would be done by narrow AI is built into the AGI itself. Um, and it have mechanisms in there, so if something goes wrong in some way, you can pause it um, and alert the human. And if it doesn't, if, it, if the human is alerted, but the pause doesn't work, right, because sometimes engineers sometimes have found that some things don't always work, that it alerts immediately to the government authority um, in real time. If the government authority says, okay, I see the pause and so forth, but it's not being paused, and the, the two lights don't match up, uh-oh, so that immediately goes to the, the international agency that, that works on this as well. So you have, in a sense, four steps, potential steps, for safety on these things along the way. So the sophistication um, is being accepted as long as it's not too heavy-handed. In the, the analogy that I think works well is that we say you can drive your car anywhere you want to go. But when the stop sign is there, you've got to stop. So you still have rules, but you still have freedom to develop. LLMs are, are not AGI, but would you, would you foresee, would you uh, encourage such control systems to be implemented in chat GPT and other LLMs today? Yeah, I haven't been focusing on narrow simply because so many people are. Yeah. Part of what the Millennium Project does is it looks at the global situation like a whole system. See, where are the gaps? You know, what needs to be done? I am very satisfied with the, 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 the well, I mean, obviously the rules aren't there. There is for China, for narrow. There is for the European uh, Union. Um, and um, there's platitudes in other places. Um, but the um, amount of energy being invested right now in narrow intelligence, uh, I figure there's nothing for us to contribute to. Uh, that's in, in process. Well, I guess if you go back to the 50s and 60s and 70s, science fiction ruled the future, right? And um, out of control, from our point of view, uh, advanced AI uh, messing up humanity was a pretty common view of much of the world. Uh, that's sort of like clouds our unconscious, collective unconscious mind with this stuff. But I think, but I think what is evolving is a very responsible position, which is, yeah, it's scary, and yeah, it's exciting. That's a responsible position, I think. And, I, and I'm watching, the res I think the responsibility is, is, is there as the mind ideas. It's just that they haven't translated that into how you do it. Tons of conversations about what, like here, but how. That's what we gotta get going on, and that's why we're working on the gap, because of that how is not being developed well at all so far. <laughs> Well, I got good news and bad news. <laughs> the good news is that um, there is a, it was called the World Summit on Parliamentary Committees for the Future, initiated by Finland, who had the first Parliamentary Committee for the Future. And they brought together some other countries. 13 showed up and two by Zoom. And then the next meeting was held in Uruguay, uh, September, October this past year, and representative parliamentary of 70 countries. So that's a boom, 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 gigantic change, something. So the idea of creating co permanent committees for the future, because you've got, a, you know, you've got an education committee, and you've got a trade committee, you've got this committee, but there's nothing that pulls it together. And that's what, what helped Finland after when the wall went down, Finland lost its identity. So they had to recreate themselves, and the Committee for the Future did that. Very successful. So now they're saying the rest of the world might want to consider doing the same thing. Now, so the second summit on the future that had the 70 folks, they said, okay, let's take a look at the future, and, and what do we got to take into account as parliamentary? And the answer was AGI governance. Um, then their final statement said that, yes, we got to do this. And there's a thing called the Interparliamentary Union, which are, as you would think, parliaments of the world. And they were a co-sponsor of the second summit. 
And they were kicking and screaming on, in preparations, but they sort of came around and said, OK, we can help collaborate with countries' drafts. So what we were saying, and so here's the good news, is that countries agreed, doesn't mean they're going to do anything, but they agreed that they would start to write drafts and would share them back and forth. And what we're hoping to happen, but I don't think will, is a world map gets put on the website of the Interparliamentary Union. And it has all the countries. And so you click on Panama, and up would come a little bar saying, initial draft, click here. Or no draft here. So in other words, you have a little peer group pressure saying who's doing what around the world and make it visible to everybody and that they should share. And one of the things I spent time at the Second World Summit with people said, don't worry about your first draft. Nobody knows what they're doing. I don't care who they are. They don't know. All right. So start to write and share and learn together. So we have to get a collective thing. And that was officially agreed to in this second summit in their declaration. Now, I don't know if they're doing anything yet. I just haven't followed up. I don't know, because it was last September, and they should start doing some drafts by now. So, that's, so the good news is a, is a momentum was started, but I don't know how effective yet. To be invented, uh, the, the second stage or phase of our AGI governance study got into exactly that. It looked at 40 different potential regulations, like the one I mentioned about putting the narrow inside the general. That would be like one of the 40. Um, and then we also had five uh, models that we assessed. Um, that, oh boy, see, some of these things are in motion. I can't go into a whole lot of detail because someone will say, well, you said such and such. Um, the General Assembly, there's a move at a foot of several ways of getting the General Assembly to introduce a UN convention or introduce a resolution to create a UN convention on AI. And because getting people to understand the difference between narrow and general gets to be too confusing, the idea would be to have a General Assembly resolution that says AI, and then have, but have two sections, specifically narrow and specifically general, so that that gets developed. Um, I don't know if that's going to be done. There are several strategies where there's, that's going on. I would like to have the final resolution, or the final uh, convention, be a joint resolution of China and the United States. And um, there's conversations about doing that. I don't know how far they'll go. We'll see. Well, the U.S. does some of the best uh, medicine in the world. So there's a two, two steps to that dance. <laughs> Um, if we can get nation-state rules, governance, and UN in two years, I would be absolutely amazed. That would be the fastest it's ever done in history. We don't even have uh, one for climate change. You know, we got all these plummets, these nice goals. What's the management? We have no government management system for climate change. And we've been talking about this since the 70s. Uh, so when people say, well, it's going to constrict this and constrict that, says, are you kidding me? It's not going to happen tomorrow morning. You've got several years to invent this sort of stuff. If we can get the rules ahead of time, I would be delighted. As a matter of fact, that's what we're trying to do. But it's not going to stop anybody for the next several years. I mean, it's, it's a silly... They don't understand international affairs. They don't understand government legislation stuff. And even Elon Musk has said as long as 10 years ago, we got to regulate this thing, you know? And so I, I don't have those fears that it's going to mess things up, frankly. At least augmented. You just, as I was just mentioning, the, the narrow AI will monitor the AGI within the system, right? Um, we already have, for example, we have rules for the aviation industry saying you've got to have a flight recorder. Right? That's, by the way, another one of those regulations we thought. We've had a flight recorder in AGI as well. 
so you can back cast to figure out where something changed. No, I, I, th I think that the idea of increasing AI involved, and I say AI because you want some narrow stuff as well, involved in governance of countries, of corporations, of the world, is a good idea. Uh, I don't see humans necessarily surrendering quickly, um, but I ex expect that depending on how we create AGI, will determine how super emerges beyond our control. So will super eventually be running the show? It's a high likelihood. Will it be running it in a good way? That's why we're here at this conference. I'm willing to bet a lot more than they're willing to admit. Because, uh, I mean, like for example, I actually used some of that stuff to, to double check my convention, because I actually wrote the, some convention draft. And to see, uh, did I forget something? I use it for like completeness. What did I forget? My stuff is still better, frankly, so far. But the completeness, of the AI is better than I am, because I'll forget something that it'll remember. I suspect that political staffs are using it all the time to double check their stuff, because the amount of people, emails coming in, phone calls coming in, faxes coming in, they're all overloaded. I mean, it's just a deluge. And dumping that stuff into, say, well, summarize this and summarize that, I am sure they're doing it, but they may not want to admit how much they're using it. But I think that, 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 that I'm sure they are using it a lot. Well, it's already running our stock market. I mean, what, what percentage of trades is run by AI versus human judgments? Well, you can say, well, human judgments were involved in putting the AI. Okay, fine, but still, we're already letting a lot of our economy being run by AI now. Uh, and, and, and investment, you know, the governments don't have most of the money in the world. Most of the money in the world is run by investment systems. That's the majority of the money, not the plurality, the majority of the money. And, the, and that, right now, I don't know what the percent of trades are run by AI, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it's over 50% now.